Our top story, the death toll from the deadly earthquakes that hit Syria and Turkey exactly a week ago has now crossed 35,000. The United Nations has acknowledged an international failure to help northwest Syria. It has now urged for an immediate ceasefire to facilitate the delivery of aid to all victims of the regions that have been devastated by the earthquake. Taking to Twitter, UN Relief Chief Martin Griffith said, the people of Syria feel abandoned and are looking for international help that hasn't arrived yet. He further said, it is his duty and obligation to correct this failure as soon as possible. A UN convoy with supplies for northwest Syria arrived via Turkey. But Griffith says much more is needed for the millions who have been displaced because of the earthquake. The World Health Organization too has issued a warning regarding the risk of infectious diseases in Syria. Experts say Syria had already pre-existing outbreaks of cholera and measles. Meanwhile, a 10-truck UN convoy crossed into northwest Syria through the Bab al-Hawa on Sunday. The WHO chief says Syria's president Bashar al-Assad has voiced openness to more border crossings for aid to be brought in for the quake victims. In the country's rebel-held northwest, the United States of America has called for the United Nations Security Council to vote immediately on delivery of UN aid to rebel-held northwest Syria through more border crossings from Turkey. <laughs> And uh, my colleague Gadi Francis has been reporting from Ground Zero in Syria on uh, the devastating aftermath of the earthquake and now joins us live uh, from there. Uh, Gadi, thanks so much for joining us. Now, of course, as everyone's been saying, so much more needs to be done for the people of Syria, for the victims of these devastating earthquakes. The UN uh, aid relief chief has said the people of Syria feel abandoned. They are still waiting for the international aid that hasn't arrived yet. What more can you tell us about the ground situation there? Uh, are, uh, are there indications that there are going to be more uh, border crossing, crossings being opened for this purpose? Hello, Neha. I am in Latakia. The reality in Latakia is a little different than northwestern Syria, uh, which you just mentioned during your bulletin. Actually, here I was just uh, conversing with a man who lost part of his family. He says, why will I talk? Nobody will come and ask about me. He's just standing right here. I am in uh, a village called Istamo in Latakia that was really hit hard. Numerous losses in lives. And the, the frustrating part for the civilians and the families here is that nobody really came for help. And some of the uh, inter-community kind of help is being um, uh, distributed. And the scenery of people in need is really uh, making them angry. So uh, behind me, three deaths and uh, three survivors in other buildings no survivors. The uh, tour that we have been on since this morning in the province of Latakia was extremely painful as we saw many people sitting on the what was once roofs of their buildings just sitting there. And I was asking each and every one I see, why are you sitting there? They say, we're just contemplating on the memories lost and seeing if anyone will come and remove the rubble. The process is very slow in Latakia. And here it's not about international aid only. It's also about the means and the uh, the scarcity of the means inside the governed Syria by the Syrian government, because under the sanctions, it was kind of close to impossible to reach these people in the first few days. Uh, the Russian troops really reside in this part of Syria. So they were the first international troops to help in the rescue process. 
and uh, after my conversations, uh, my multiple conversations with people here, they said they were more efficient because they were more organized. Before the Russians reached these places, it was only civilians trying to lift with their bare hands. Some were able to rescue their neighbors, some were able to take out the dead bodies of their neighbors and their lo loved ones, and some waited indefinitely until the professional rescue came. This is the reality in this part of Syria. The challenge is that in each and every part it is different. All right, uh, Gadi, thanks very much for getting us all those details. This is clearly a very difficult situation for the victims of the earthquake, especially in Syria. Let's certainly hope that politics will be kept aside and they get the help that they need at the earliest. Uh, look after yourself. Thank you very much, uh, Gadi, for those details. And the earthquakes have left residents with no water, electricity or shelter. But rescue volunteers continue to work across Aleppo in Syria, pulling out bodies from under the rubble. Gadi sent us this report. So, right now, we are with the volunteers from the municipality, trying with their bare hands to go and rescue or to pull out dead bodies that are still under the rubble of the 7.8 magnitude that hit Syria and Turkey. Aleppo is one of the disaster zones as per the Syrian government. Thousands are dead. The records are still not very accurate because there are still bodies and lost people who aren't recorded yet. This is Weon coming to you from ground zero of the aftermath of the deadly earthquake that hit West Asia. I am Ghadi Francis. Keep on watching Weon. World is one. How many people are going to be? How many people are going to be? There is no home that hasn't been touched by this disaster. Right here, this young man has lost his brother and his brother's entire family. I could easily say there is no home in Aleppo that hasn't lost a relative. Some entire families have gone. And right now, the evacuation process is still ongoing in Aleppo because many of the buildings are still in danger of collapsing over the heads of their residents.